You're so prissy. We all wet our pants every weekend. It's tradition. Yeah, that's a tradition that I'm not going to uphold. Unless I'm hanging out with Billy Madison. Yes, you ain't cool unless you pee your pants. Hello, friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily cringe content anywhere on the internet. Promise swears he's it's just a fact. And it's totally science. Go ahead, look it up. Thanks so much. Today, we're back into Funky P Beard. It seems OP finally left this debaucherous game, but uh, the story continues because I guess these people continue existing. So I guess we will see how their continued existence goes today. <laughs> Let's get into it. The Do Funky Pea Beard Part 4A. Oh my god, are we allowed to do that? It's probably fine. It's probably fine. Split it up. I'll shove them both in here. It's great. <laughs> Apparently, this chapter exceeds the character limit, so I'm splitting it up. So, welcome, or welcome back, to this crazy weekend of crapulence, along with some rage and role-playing. You might regret it. Nevertheless, let me introduce you to the Chummers. We got OP, Funky P Beard, Maury, Axton, Sage, Athena, and Snorlax. If you need the cast list read out, check out the previous video links in the description. We also have a new cast member, and her name is Molly. And let's just say, she's the MVP. Yeah, Molly always saved me from myself, tripping on the dance floor. <laughs> uh, chapter 4, The Do. Uh, it was almost noon when I woke up. Fat! I scrambled to get dressed, slap on a little makeup, put my hair in purple pigtails, ask myself whether I was dolling myself up for Funky or for Axton. Well, yeah, that was a no-brainer. Did I see this as a problem? Well, yes and no. Yes, because I had agreed to wear the girlfriend label, even though the label was ill-fitting and made of scratchy, synthetic material. <laughs> no, because my interactions with Funky did not feel like anything even remotely resembling a romantic relationship. But, uh, I'd chew on those thoughts later, I guess. Hell yeah, bro, kick the can down the road. My question is, why are we going back? We've escaped, it's over! I'll take it to the next level. I'll pack up a bunch of shit in the U-Haul. I'm moving a couple states over right now. <laughs> Sorry, I'm making a go of it in a new city. Uh, OP says I engaged in some basic humaning, brushing teeth, applying deodorant, etc. Dabbed on some snickerdoodle perfume oil on my wrists and neck, put on my new shoes and dashed out the door. I looked at my phone to see if I had a missed call or an angry text from Funky. Nope. Good. The drunkard must have still been passed out. Good. Wait till he wakes up and then explain to him that it's a, a degenerate hell house that you don't ever want to return to. But I guess that's a hard conversation to have. Much better to just charge back into the house and surround yourself with poop and upchuck. <laughs> uh, but why was I so willing to go back? Indeed after the utter insanity I'd witnessed the previous night. Was it just because I had a possibly flirtatious exchange with an attractive guy? Well, sure, that was part of it. <laughs> I'm proud of you for admitting that. And if this relationship was any sort of relationship, I would admonish you. But as somebody who perpetually jumps from relationship to relationship, I do understand the advantage of having something on the back burner. Anyway... <laughs> uh... Mostly, and sorry for getting serious again, it was because Funky had been monopolizing my free time and doing everything he could to minimize my contact with friends and family. And I'm a sociable person. I do tend to reach a point where I've had enough and want to be alone, but up to the point where my social battery runs out, I do genuinely enjoy human interaction. I wonder what that's like. <laughs> Different frame of reference, I guess. So the thought of having another chance to interact with non-funky people, as odd as the previous night had been, was appealing to me. No, don't do this. Call up one of your old friends. Be like, hey, it's been a while since we talked. You want to go see a movie? You want to just do something normal? <laughs> uh, so I Ubered to Funky's place to get my car. Then I drove back to Sage's house and parked on the side of the street. Now I was free to eject without any fuss. And I noticed four Molly-made vehicles parked in the driveway. Good. 
I mean, good, the house is getting cleaned, but I feel bad as hell for those maids. <laughs> they don't get paid enough for this. I didn't even want to imagine the mess that had accumulated when the hangovers kicked in. I checked the door to find it unlocked. Was it possible that my absence might have gone unnoticed? As I entered the house, I could hear one of the professional cleaners yelling at Sage. I'll call her Molly. Molly? I'm charging you triple. I've had to call in six extra girls. We've cleaned up puke and pee-pee and poo-poo. And your house smells like a distillery. You are all nasty, nasty people. Why does she sound like Dr. Girlfriend? I'm not sure. <laughs> I was nearly peeing myself with laughter. One of the professional cleaners swooped past me and I felt embarrassed to even be associated with these nasty, nasty people even though all of them except for Funky had been super nice to me. Yeah, super nice, dong in the face, the nicest. <laughs> uh, I found my way into the kitchen and accidentally interrupted Sage and Athena arguing over who was going to pay the cleaning bill. Sage was in favor of splitting it between the chummers and Athena was in favor of sticking Mori with the bill since it was his nasty nasty rules that caused this nasty nasty mess. Objectively, I believe Athena is correct here. I cleared my throat so it didn't seem like I was eavesdropping. <coughs> Athena. OP, hey, where you been all morning, OP? I ran home to get some sleep. The snoring was pretty loud. Athena, I hear you. We sleep in Sage's bedroom, but Mori makes all the others sleep in the war room or on the porch. You might be able to convince him to let you sleep in the guest room tonight, OP. Isn't it your house, Sage? I'll play by your rules, Sage. Yeah, but Mori's in charge during Shadowrun weekends. Damn. This really was starting to feel like a fucking cult. Starting to feel? <laughs> no, no. I think we're in there with both feet at this point. OP says, hey guys, how much hell am I about to catch from Funky? Sage, that would be none. Cause he's still passed out in the backyard. <laughs> I made my way to the porch. I guess the cleaning crew hadn't gotten there yet. There were toppled cups, empty liquor bottles, and several piles of puke on the porch. Alliteration. And the distinct scent of boozy pee clashed in an act of olfactory violence with the scent of stale vom. I didn't even want to take a single step outside. I was still wearing my brand new shoes, after all. But the rest of my outfit was blissfully casual. Still probably don't want to get puke on it, that's a bad look. <laughs> Funky's absurdly formal clothes were draped over the hammock, and he was sprawled across a lawn chair in nothing but black boxer briefs, snoring like a freight train. Axton was sitting on a dry patch of the steps that led down to the yard, smoking a cig and drinking what I hoped was coffee. Snorlax was passed out in the inflatable kiddie pool, <laughs> and Maury was, well, nowhere to be seen. I mean, I assume Mori has his own room, or he's getting up to hijinks somewhere. <laughs> Axton turned around and noticed me. Surely he didn't remember trying to kiss me the night before. I mean, I kind of hoped that he did, but it would make my life a whole lot easier if he didn't. Axton. Hey Val, where did you run off to after you put us to bed? OP. I went to sleep. Axton. Where? OP. Uh... Axton. I wouldn't say anything to Funky. Don't worry. I wanted to believe him. I went home. I wanted to sleep in my own bed, and I wanted to have my car in case I get tired again. I seriously can't keep up with you guys. Axton. That's probably not anything to be ashamed of. Wanna come sit? Have a smoke? I scanned the porch. I'm not sure where it's safe to step. Axton put his cig in the ashtray and stood up. Combat boots to the rescue! He crossed the porch, picked me up, and carried me to the vom slash pee slash booze free step. Oh yeah, this is happening. He remembers for sure. <laughs> As he was putting me down, his hand very deliberately grazed the length of my spine. I guess he did remember. I couldn't seem to pull my hand off of his shoulder, nor could I seem to take my eyes off of his lips. But just then, Funky stirred, and he roared, And hit my girlfriend, you piece of shit! There you go, timing! <laughs> he tried to stand, but his tall, hungover ass just withered back to the ground. OP, 
Good morning. Don't worry. Exton was just helping me protect my new shoes. Funky. So help me, pretty boy. If you touch my girlfriend again, I will end you. Come at me, bro. <laughs> but Axton says, Just trying to be gentlemanly, buddy. You want some coffee? Funky grunted. Axton turned to me. You want some too? Funky. Do not speak to her, you freaking skid mark. OP. I'm good. I'll hit Mori up for some coke later on. <laughs> Axton laughed and headed to the kitchen. Funky, you will not get coke for Mori. It will literally kill his fairy ass if he gives you coke. I don't understand. Does the coke come with strings attached? Probably. It always does. <laughs> Snorlax was stirring in the kiddie pool. Snorlax, Funky, chill, bro. Seriously, god damn. You're gonna pop a vein in your forehead. I felt like pausing and shoehorning in several pages of meandering introspection in an attempt to explain why I was with Funky in the first place. But I've since written a whole ass prequel to this story, so I'll keep this part brief. A prequel, you say? <laughs> like I said, Val has written a lot of stuff. I'm glad to be started catching up on it now. Funky's goblinization unfolded in tiny, almost imperceptible increments, and by the time he had become a full-blown possessive lunatic, every attempt to end things with him resulted in an arsenal of manipulation tactics that I'd never experienced before, and that I was ill-prepared to try and refute. Yeah, it's one of those live and learn type of things. The hardest type of lessons. <laughs> I suppose the most honest answer as to why I had given Funky chance after chance is that I had absolutely no prior experience being emotionally close to a person whose mental instability resulted in cruelty. I'll be honest, I feel slightly called out by that one. <laughs> had I been around theater weirdos? Absolutely. Dorks? Sure. Very obviously clinically depressed comedians? Yep. <laughs> but a batshit crazy rage beast? No. Never. Not until Funky. And I grew up in a loving family, so character assassinations and terroristic threats were foreign and disconcerting to me. According to Funky, I had been spoiled rotted since I had never endured any childhood trauma, and he was helping me get used to the real world. What felt like cruelty to me felt like chivalry to him. I think that's antithetical to everything a boyfriend's supposed to be. Have you led an easy, sheltered life? Hey, that's great. Let me continue that for you. Until the point she flies off the handle, because she definitely deserves something better. Yeah, been there too. <laughs> but yeah, he's like, oh, you lived a, a nice, sheltered life? Let me leave some deep, indelible marks upon your soul because of it. <laughs> it's really weird. LP continues, I feel like I need to once again remind my potentially perplexed readers that Funky hid his beardery at first. I mean, he was weird, but I'm obviously comfortable around weirdos. Perhaps overly comfortable. Honestly, samesies, this channel's sort of become a haven for weirdos of all types. <laughs> I honestly never imagined that the friendship with Funky would be anything more than just that. And when it became flirtatious, I never imagined that it would go beyond a wink and a wiggle. <laughs> I wasn't seeking anything serious, and I had been adamant about that. But the next thing I knew, I was Funky's girlfriend slash beard sitter. And my peers, for whatever reason, were proud of me for growing up and settling down. Yeah, I'm really happy to see you settling down with that psychopath. Maybe you should have some little psychopath babies soon. That'll fix the relationship. <laughs> Your friends are out of their depth here, too. Haven't met him, hate to say it, cold hard truth. Everyone just kept telling me that relationships are hard. If you ever feel the need to cough out this fetid tonsil stone of wisdom, <laughs> please operationally define the word hard. When a relationship feels like a prison sentence and you find yourself fearing for your safety or the safety of your loved ones, that isn't simply hard. That is coercive control, and you need to run. Preach! <laughs> but never forget that running is often much, much easier said than done. There's no shame in getting help from friends or family or law enforcement. It's all good advice. Get that paper trail started early. 
Law enforcement can't really save you, but they can make the court case easier down the road. <laughs> Uh, OP says, I'm probably trying way too hard to explain it. It was foolish to trust a weirdo, and it was foolish to put up with all manner of insanity in a futile attempt to keep him from going nuclear. But I rose from the ashes of this dumpster fire of a relationship, armed with an understanding of the warning signs of neckbeardery. Yeah, and beyond. <laughs> and I also got some truly disgusting horror stories, so here you go! Hey, thanks so much, I'm gonna monetize all of these. <laughs> uh, you need me to break you off a piece, let me know. <laughs> so, uh, where were we? Snorlax was telling Funky to chill out, Axton was going to get some coffee for the lanky, bearded ball of rage, and I was standing on the one clean step, hoping that the cleaning crew would come outside and save us all. Cleaning crew don't have that type of power, only Jesus has that type of power, and yeah, he decided he ain't coming back. <laughs> he saw all this, he's like, eh. <laughs> huh? Oh, yeah, fine. And Funky was flailing about, trying to achieve a sitting position. Snorlax seemed to have gone back to sleep, and Axton returned to the porch with a cup of coffee and a bottle of water. He made his way down to Funky. Funky, you better stay far, far away from her for the remainder of the weekend. OP, Funky, he's helping your hungover ass, and he hasn't been inappropriate towards me in any way. That was kind of a lie, but I guess it all depends on what you consider inappropriate. Well, now we're getting into semantics, aren't we? <laughs> I mean, Axton hadn't put his junk on my face or anything, but the lines of propriety were in perpetual parallax with Funky, who sat there waving a dismissive hand and harumphing in response to my truthful statement. OP, I promise you that I'll punch him in the face if he makes me uncomfortable. Otherwise, please, just let me get to know your friends. You said that that was an important part of this weekend. Axton sat down the hangover remedies next to Funky's lawn chair. Axton, you want some Advil? Funky nodded, and Axton took the pills out of his pocket and handed them over. Funky washed the pills down, took a few sips of lukewarm coffee, and leaned back in the chair, groaning miserably. Ugh. Yeah, but you made these choices, so I can't feel that bad for you. <laughs> I sat down on the clean step and lit a cigarette. Axton left Funky to his own devices and approached me cautiously. I gestured for him to come sit next to me. Axton grinned sheepishly, took his cig out of the ashtray, and sat down on the step. I wanted to keep Funky under control, so I said under my breath, We better sit about two feet apart. Axton and I both scooched away from one another, the ashtray serving as a buffer, and we continued to speak quietly so that Funky's hungover groans would drown out our conversation. Axton, are you really going to punch me? OP, failing at playful banter, are you going to make me uncomfortable? His grin faded a bit. Have I made you uncomfortable? I'm sorry if I did. I made eye contact with him, and held it for about three seconds longer than I would have held friendly eye contact, and I replied with my own sheepish grin, not at all. This is so wrong and naughty and exciting and even slightly justified. <laughs> I couldn't recall ever having seen Funky smile, either because he thought it was beneath him, or because his beard entirely obscured most of his facial features. Axton's smile, in contrast, was easy to see, and painfully handsome. And let me be clear about the shallow physical attraction. Sure, I was able to find Axton attractive without tilting my head, squinting my eyes, and doing mental gymnastics, but he's by no means a Chad, or a personalityless pretty boy, as Funky would have you believe. Well, I mean, it's kind of on a sliding scale. When you have as little personality as Funky, like any sliver of personality becomes a massive threat. Continuing on, Snorlax was sitting up by this time, and he seemed to be in a world of hurt. Axton, Yo, Snor, are you needing some hangover help or two? Snorlax groaning, Please. Axton got up to fetch Snorlax some coffee, water, and pills. Dude, he's MVP. Axton's combat boots were definitely going to need to get hosed down before he went back into the carpeted war room. 
I hoped that Molly and her pissed off crew were on hand to deal with those barfy boot prints. <laughs> <laughs> and it sounded like they were, because I soon heard Molly screeching at Sage again. Molly, there's more mess on the porch. What sort of mess? More poo-poo? A lake of liquor? You people are animals. I'm never cleaning your house again. Sage, uh, I think it's just booze and pee. You should be able to, like, power wash it. Axton, there's a ton of puke out there, too. I think I might have tracked some into the kitchen. Uh, I'm so sorry. Molly, animals. You people are animals. <laughs> Disgusting. Uh, she's not wrong, though. <laughs> Axton ran to Snorlax and delivered the hangover helper. Axton, dude, the maids are on their way and they're pissed off. We got to disappear. I put my cigarette out, stood up, and dashed over to Funky, who was still reclining in the lawn chair with a pained expression on the visible part of his face. OP, Funky, the maids are coming. We need to get out of here. Funky, and go where? OP, I don't know. I've never done this before. <laughs> I think Axton knows, but I'm afraid to talk to him. Funky, hey, fuckface, where are we running off to? Axton, garage, go around the side of the house. The next half of the story is posting immediately, also being read immediately. The Do, Funky P Beard Part 4B. If you're still here, thank you for your patience. Also, if you're still here, maybe consider subscribing to, to Red X or, or liking the video. You seem to be enjoying yourself for some reason. You're sick, and I love it. Please stick around. <laughs> now, where were we? Axton helped Snorlax stagger around to the garage, and Funky managed to wobble to his feet. As he was standing up, I noticed a whiskey-wee aroma and an extra dark patch of fabric near the crotch of his black underpants. I mean, that's big brain plays. There's a difference between peeing your pants and peeing your underpants, all right? Neither are ideal, but one is preferable. <laughs> I shoved his water bottle into the waistband of my comfy pants, grabbed his cigs and cigarette holder in one hand, his lukewarm coffee in the other, and guided him to the garage. I tried my best to keep his wet boxer briefs away from my clean Vault Hunter tank top, but his crotch was level with my midsection, so I curved my body away from him and let him basically use me as a walker, slopping wasted sips of coffee onto the ground as we wobbled. In the end, we did all manage to enter the garage through the side door. Does this happen every weekend? <laughs> Why is there a protocol for these things? It was dusty and musty and stuffy, but the garage was blissfully devoid of any puke or pee. Well, aside from Funky's underpants, I guess. <laughs> Snorlax was wearing different clothes and appeared to have cleaned himself up since the previous night's puke fest. Axton also appeared freshly showered. Funky was the only fool who had managed to get filthier. Yeah, he wants his beard to get all gross so they could take pictures or something weird like that. Remember from the last one? Not the one we just read, but the last, last one. Sage must have anticipated that we would take shelter from the angry maids in the garage because he came out from the house and opened the garage doors for us, letting in a nice breeze. Sage, you guys good? We all indicated the affirmative. Sage, excellent. Moy should be back from the liquor store pretty soon, and he's picking up some hangover food, too. Snorlax, what's he getting? Sage, Taco Bell. Seriously? <laughs> Not only were they going to have to restock the booze, but they were also planning to chow down on Taco Bell to help with the hangover. There was no way in hell that that was a good idea. Yeah, Taco Bell's really a, a greasy, disgusting mess that's only good while you're drunk. Once the hangover hits, nah. You need to sit down and have some oatmeal, some dry toast. <laughs> you know what they say, all toasters, toast, toast. Uh, at any rate, Funky and Snorlax were chugging the remainder of their hangover helper and seemed to be gradually getting their sea legs back. Axton had apparently been awake a little longer than they had, so his hangover seemed to have passed. Yeah, a little hair of the dog, huh? <laughs> I'm just assuming this since I was forbidden to speak to him. And with the only two non-hungover people there, forbidden to speak to one another, the garage was eerily silent. 
We all sat on the dusty floor, and Funky, still wearing nothing but wet boxer briefs, tried to pull me into his lap. <laughs> OP gets up and crosses the room, saying, Hell no! You whizzed yourself! I'm not sitting in your lap until you go wash up and put on some clean underpants. Funky, it's not pee, it's dew. Yes, some delightful morning dew has gathered on my singular blade of grass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still gonna pass. Axton says, No, nah, that's piss, Funky. I can smell it. Funky snarls, You shut your fuck nugget mouth, asshat. Wow. Axton's ability to exhibit no reaction at all to Funky's venom was impressive. I might have to try that and see if it would work for me. I think Axton's kicked the shit out of Funky a couple times before. There's a lot of subtext here that we're not getting quite yet. Snorlax says, He's right. It's definitely P. No judgment, but you should really go change your clothes. Funky wasn't listening. Damn it, Pixie! Please get over yourself and let me cuddle you. You're being a bad girlfriend. Yeah, not getting soaked in your boyfriend's pee. I mean, if that's what you're into, that's what you're into. But I'm not gonna sign off on it. <laughs> Ugh, keep your fetish away from me! Uh, OP says, I'll sit down, but I'm not sitting in your lap. What the hell happened to this being a formal occasion, Funky? Saturday afternoons are for hangovers, OP. So, do you want me to go get your backpack so you can change, Funky? You're so prissy. We all wet our pants every weekend. It's tradition. Yeah, that's a tradition that I'm not going to uphold. Unless I'm hanging out with Billy Madison. Yes, you ain't cool unless you pee your pants. He said this as he wound his arms around me from the side. Snorlax and Axton were both shaking their heads, refusing to endorse this alleged tradition. And as long as Funky's long arms tightened around me, I felt like I was in a freaking cage. I rolled my eyes, and I think Axton noticed my exasperated expression because I could see him snickering. Funky, what's funny, you dick? Axton composed himself, and Snorlax gallantly stepped up to save us. Snorlax, he's laughing because I farted. Huh, sorry. <laughs> Always a sucker for bathroom humor. I burst out laughing. Axton started laughing again. Snorlax started laughing, lifted a cheek, and really did rip one this time. <laughs> no Taco Bell needed. <laughs> <laughs> that made all the reasonable people in the garage laugh even harder, but not Funky. Nah, Funky was fuming. Funky, what the hell's really so friggin' funny? Someone fess up to me or I'm gonna start skewering you a-holes with my samurai sword. I know that probably sounded pretty cool in your head, but <laughs> it's super cringe out loud. Axton <laughs> uh, says, dude, for real? We're laughing at a fart! More laughter. Snorlax also laughing. <laughs> oh, yeah. The thought of Taco Bell gave me gas. Funky's fury just made the situation even funnier, <laughs> and all of us were in stitches. Funky, I know you're all laughing at me! Well, stop being so easy to laugh at. <laughs> Yeah, I guess it did kind of start off that way, but by the time his rage was hitting the boiling point, we really were just behaving like overgrown children and laughing hysterically at Snorlax's farts. And everything was ten times funnier because we had this stick in the mud sitting there getting outrageously offended by the laughter. <laughs> you know the feeling, right? When you're not supposed to laugh at something, it becomes even harder not to laugh. Or is that just me? No way, man. Laughter's my defense mechanism. I will poke fun at absolutely anything. Go ahead, slaughter some sacred cows. It feels really good. Cancer is scary. Guess what? Now it's funny. Just joke about it. There's not much you can do anyway, so just lean in. Funky says, fine. I'm getting dressed. OP, come help me. You jabronis can stay here and laugh at each other's farts. Come help me. <laughs> yes. Loyal squire, come help me affix my breastplate, forsooth. <laughs> OP says, you know what? I think I'm going to stay here and laugh at farts with these guys. <laughs> you go ahead. 
Funky. I will not allow you to be alone with these cretins. They can't control themselves. You're just fresh meat to them. Look at him, really trying to control the situation, projecting on everybody, but we can all see that small PP energy, bro. At this point, OP exchanged looks with Snorlax and Axton, and they both seemed bewildered. Funky, uh, quit dawdling, woman! Axton, bro, she's not meat. Funky took a deep breath and clenched his fists. Go ahead, dude, throw the first punch. We'll do this right now. <laughs> Snorlax says, yeah, dude, just get dressed. OP can chill with us. And then he says to me, it's about time for a wake and bake if you want to partake. With the Dr. Seuss rhymes and everything, now you speak in my language! <laughs> <laughs> I smiled and nodded, much preferring to goof off with these guys, as opposed to helping a grown-ass man put his inappropriately formal clothes back on just for another evening of binge drinking and barfing and yelling. I didn't smoke weed all that often, but it sounded delightful to me in that moment. I mean, it's a delightful thing. It's gonna make that Taco Bell taste like actual food, <laughs> at the very least. <laughs> uh, Funky says, I know your sick mind, little lady. <laughs> You're not to be trusted, especially with hardcore drugs involved. It's not hardcore, it's a, it's a giggle bush. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Get your ass up and come with me or I'll make a Craigslist ad telling strange men that you want someone to break in and assault you. Dude, wh what? <laughs> this has gone from like zero to a hundred all of a sudden. And thankfully Axton does call him out on it saying, What the actual fuck, Funky? You would seriously do that to your girlfriend? I ought to report your ass. Funky, she's not yours to protect, pretty boy. I'm protecting her from herself. OP, accompany me now. Reporting him, son, you should punch him in the mouth is what you should do. The fact that Funky was hurling repugnant and probably empty threats at me in front of people that I considered to be cool new friends was humiliating, to say the least. But starting a row at that point seemed like it carried a high risk of escalation, so I acquiesced and followed Funky out of the garage, mouthing, I'm so sorry, to Snorlax and Axton. Yeah, you're not the one that needs to apologize, OP. How are they still hanging around with this dude? Like, okay, let's theorize that they didn't know he was a maniac. But once you find out for sure that he's a maniac, is it not time to cut ties? I don't really want to play games with somebody like that anymore. <sighs> but it's hard to leave a cult. <laughs> Instead of heading to the hammock in the backyard, where Funky's clothes presumably remained, he entered the house through the garage door and headed straight for the guest room to retrieve his backpack. Good. Maybe he was at least going to put on some clean underpants. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but no, he wasn't. That would have taken away from the repulsive debauchery that his whizzy boxer briefs allowed him to revel in. Funky really needed to settle on a story. Was he such a wild, crazy party boy that he was too cool to care if he'd wet his pants? Or was he a pathetic drunk who had passed out and managed to collect afternoon dew in the crotch of his boxer briefs and nowhere else on his body? I guess we'll never know. I mean, it's just a shot in the dark, but I'm going with the latter. <laughs> his Shadowrun stamp tramp was in full view as he bent down and grabbed his wallet from his black leather backpack. We didn't talk about the Shadowrun tattoo. On the lower back? Jesus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, gross. What an idiot. Funky then marched into the kitchen and told Sage, Bring me a maid. Oh, you need a maid and a squire. I will suggest to her that the chamber pot be emptied on top of your head, since you don't seem to care. <laughs> Sage says, uh, they got their hands pretty full at the moment. Funky produced a hundred dollar bill from his wallet. I want my clothes steam cleaned, and I'll need them spritzed with perfume. Athena's got some here, doesn't she? Sage. Yeah, but you're gonna have to ask her if you want to use her perfume. And you're gonna have to ask the cleaning crew to steam your clothes. They're all beyond annoyed with me over the condition of the house. There's a new head made. I'm having to pay triple the normal cleaning fee, dude. 
Yes, what a shock. Who could have predicted this turn of events? <laughs> In my mind, the considerate action would have been to forego the steaming and offer the cash to Sage, since Funky's sparkle vom and spilled liquor and pee undeniably contributed to this mess. Instead, Funky exited through the front door, made his way around to the backyard, and began removing his clothes from the hammock. The maids shrieked. Funky ignored the shrieks, gathered his clothes, and sauntered back to the house. Once we were back indoors, we could hear Molly going over the bill with Sage. Funky, Ahem, madam, I need these clothes steam cleaned. <laughs> Uh, I'm a maid, not a fucking dry cleaner. Get out of my face. <laughs> he thrust his suit and the hundred dollar bill in her direction. Molly, excuse me. We were hired to clean this disgusting house. You want your clothes steamed? Go to the dry cleaners. <laughs> Molly is MVP. She sniffed the air and then added, and take a shower. You smell like a drunk diaper. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, OP steps in and says, Hey, Sage, do you mind if I steam Funky's clothes in the guest bathroom? Oh, come on, OP, not like this! It's like two steps forward, one step back with this woman, come on! But I guess she's just trying to calm waters at this point, I get it, sort of. Sage says, yeah, that's fine by me. I pulled Funky aside and said, give me your clothes. You peed in your sleep after you took your suit off, right? Funky, it's due! <laughs> OP. Doesn't matter. Your underwear's wet, and you need to put on a dry pair. In the meantime, I'll start the shower, hang your clothes up, and steam will get rid of most of the wrinkles. We used to do that in college all the time. Funky says, uh, But those maid bitches have professional equipment. If they could steam a carpet, then they could steam a suit. OP says, I think that's a different type of steamer. Funky, oh, so you're an expert on steamers. OP, not the Cleveland kind. <laughs> uh, yeah, give her a chili dog. Swear I've heard about Cleveland steamers since like the sixth grade. It's hilarious. <laughs> uh, OP says, damn it, the other chummers might have appreciated my attempt at an obvious dirty joke. But Funky harumphed. And I proceeded to put the plan into action. I turned the shower on as hot as it would go, sifted through Funky's suit components carefully to make sure his pants were dry, and fortunately they were. I hung the clothes as close to the shower curtain as I could without getting them wet, and sat down to try and enjoy the steam room and the solitude. I don't know how you still go. I would be back at my house. Lights off, door locked, social batteries drained. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> OP says, maybe all of this would make me feel refreshed, but the sweetness of that solitude wouldn't last, as I could hear a conversation taking place just outside the door. Sage, what the hell, man? Why are you guarding the bathroom door? Funky, I don't want any of you pervs trying to walk in on my girlfriend while she showers. I mean, I can appreciate that, I suppose, but you don't need to stand right in front of the door like a weirdo. Kick it on the couch, just keep an eye out, you know. The insecurity of this man truly is un unfathomable. <laughs> Sage just says, okay. I think she's just in there steaming your fancy clothes. Funky says, she might be taking a shower too. Naked. I have to protect her from the male gaze. <laughs> uh, yeah, mostly yours. Sage says, well... I've got a girlfriend, Maury's not here, and Snorlax and Axton are both pretty stand-up guys. Funky, I don't trust Axton. I caught him picking her up on the porch, and then he tried to talk to her. Sage, picking her up. As in the crap you pull with the skanks at beer goggles? Or literally picking her up so she didn't step in puke. Funky, eh, he made some lame excuse. Sage, so, picking her up so she didn't step in puke. Oh my god, what a jerk. Funky, right? <laughs> Sage, listen, Funky, the door locks, and she is a grown woman. Leave her alone for five minutes, for fuck's sakes. And go put on some clean underwear. Funky, it's just due! <laughs> uh, it's not, we all know it's not, though. 
It has that ropey, dehydrated pee smell. Everybody can smell it as soon as you walk into the door, okay? <laughs> OP says, when I couldn't take the steam anymore, I turned off the shower, retrieved Funky's fancy clothes, which did look spiffier, and opened the door to inhale the fresh, cool air. Ah. And the lovely cleaning crew had managed to get rid of the poopy, pukey, pissy pizza pundancy. <laughs> <laughs> Try saying that five times fast. Apparently being lightly mocked by the vice principal had embarrassed Funky enough to make him go find something better to do. No one was outside the door at the moment. I gathered Funky's clothes, carried them to the guest room, and laid them out on the bed. Now to find my seething anger ball of a boyfriend. Best guess? Well, he was probably back in the garage griping at Axton and Snorlax, so that's where I checked first. I entered the garage from the house, and I found Sage, Athena, Axton, Snorlax, and Mori all sitting around enjoying some Taco Bell and drinking beer. But Funky was not present. OP, hey guys, have any of you seen a tall, angry guy in some pissy boxer briefs? <laughs> Mori, he saw the back porch. <sighs> Said he had to call his work. Ah uh, yes, work. That meant he was texting one of his randos, Probably the one who showed up at Sage's house late last night. Yeah, I called that one out for what it was tonight. <laughs> OP says, beer me? And they all answer with a validating chorus of hell yeah and go girl! I grabbed a beer from the cooler and scanned the room for a place to sit. Axton stood up and led me over to his spot. Axton, hey guys, who am I? And then he pulled me onto his lap, wrapped his arms around me and started shouting in a caveman voice, my girlfriend! Mine! Uh, no talk to her! Don't even look at her or I stab you in the eye with my samurai sword! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, including me, found this incredibly funny. And I was pleased to see that the whole team was acknowledging Funky's absurdly possessive behavior. Maybe if the people he respected most in this world called him out on his insane possessiveness, then he would self-reflect? Yeah. Let's see how that one goes. <laughs> uh, he's not the type for self-reflection. He's the type for self-immolation. <laughs> uh, I had absolutely no desire to move once the joke was over. Oh yeah, this is naughty and exciting. Again, I should admonish you, but I'm sort of rooting for accident at this point. <laughs> I wasn't trapped by a long, angry arm, although Axton had rested his hand on top of mine. Nothing was grinding salaciously against my hip. I felt cautiously cozy. And instead of muttering noob and bragging about his sick Shatter Run skills, Axton whispered, Am I about to get punched? I laughed. Not by me. I am perfectly comfortable here. But I did fear some verbal violence. If Funky stormed into the garage and caught me sitting in another guy's lap, especially since my position in Axton's lap had happened purely to make a mockery out of Funky. Well, this is a hell of a tangled web we weave in, I gotta tell you that much. <laughs> OP says, I guess I needed to do some self-reflection too. Not because I was finding myself attracted to a guy who wasn't my boyfriend. My boyfriend was a psycho, and I needed to reflect on why I hadn't been able to find an exit strategy that didn't lead to terroristic threats or stalking. Upon that thought, I leaned into Axton for a few more seconds, slid over to my own spot on the dusty floor, and sipped my beer through an involuntary smirk. I couldn't remember the last time I had a beer, but it was making me feel all lightheaded and flushed. Yep, beers is good food! Maury says, I think I'll add a new punishment tonight, <laughs> but only for Funky. If he glitches, he has to sit in my lap and let me paw all over him. <laughs> See how he likes it. <sighs> OP, be sure to get a raging boner and jab him in the hip with it. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Maybe it turns out he likes it. Maybe he moves in with Mori. Maybe this whole problem solves itself. <laughs> I couldn't tell if the laughing that ensued was because I'd made a crude joke to the perfect audience or because I had unintentionally called the inevitable. Mori, in a deliberately creepy tone. Oh, that won't be a problem. 
<laughs> and then we all laughed again. <laughs> and then all the fun was sucked right out of the garage as Funky entered from the driveway and demanded to know what was funny. Sage said, Maury's just cooking up some new punishments. Funky, that's terrifying. OP, hey, I put your clothes in the guest room if you want to get dressed. Funky, okay, I'm getting a beer first. He cracked open a beer and headed inside. As he towered in the doorway, he turned to me. Funky, you coming? Maury, you need your girlfriend to help you put your clothes on. <laughs> Are you in kindergarten? Funky, eat a dick, Maury. Maury, sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes on you, I'm into that shit! <laughs> Funky shuddered and trudged inside. He hadn't made any more demands that I accompany him, so I let him go put on his big boy pants all by himself. Look, Mommy, I'm a big boy now! Yeah, physically, I guess. Mentally, you're still just a Lilliputian. I don't know how it can get any smaller. But at least your brain matches your dick. <laughs> uh, this has been a mess, but like I do enjoy the the slowdown. Now we're getting to like put some punches in on Funky and OP's actually making friends. Everybody's sort of grooving. Mori, yeah, he's still a creep, but he seems to be using his powers for good instead of evil here. So I give it a pass. I'm sure this story will only continue to heat up. So uh, let me know if you liked it by liking, commenting, subscribing. We'll get the next one out to you next week. I appreciate you guys so very much for watching. On the end card, I'm gonna link Wheezy Beard. Just so we can be reminded how bad things can actually get. It is a, a hell of a ride though, so don't take it if you're not ready. Always remember friends that you are loved, you are worthy, you definitely, definitely deserve it, and I shall see you in the next one. So until then, bye bye. Go ahead and cut him open. It's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine.